Now, if you're looking to gain that advantage over all your mates in your mini leagues, don't worry, I've got you covered with my top transfer targets and teams to be targeting ahead of game week three. So let's go and dive into it. Now, before we dive into today's video, I just want to say thank you very much for helping the channel hit 7,000 subscribers. Now, if you want to help us hit 7,500 and become part of the journey, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the FPL Tom YouTube channel. Massively appreciated by myself. First off, let's dive into the fixtures for game week three, the goals and clean sheet odds. This is all coming fantasy by via, via sorry fantasy football hub. Obviously, if you want to go and check them out, they're still running their 50% off sale. A link in the description if you want to go and check out some of their amazing features that they do have on their website. We used this last week, and I feel it is a very useful tool to obviously help you identify maybe some of those tougher games where you're a little bit unsure who you should be playing for clean sheets who you should be backing as well for teams that look good from the offensive standpoint as well some standouts for me obviously has to be Manchester City after the obviously romping of Ipswich today West Ham haven't started the season awfully but did concede quite a lot of uh, you know high quality chances in XG against Aston Villa in game week one so I would imagine City to go and get a couple there Chelsea at home to Crystal Palace who've not started the season brightly as well Obviously, we're still waiting for them to play in game week two before we know what's going to be happening with Nkuku. Obviously, Cole Palmer potentially could become an option as well with, obviously, you know, decent fixtures lining up after that Crystal Palace game as well. But an interesting one for them. And then Liverpool against Manchester United. I think we still saw the defensive frailties that United have. And obviously, Liverpool were purring in game week one. Obviously, the big Super Sunday clash for that one. So again, probably worth looking investing for the attackers. Less so on the defensive side. In terms of the clean sheets this week Arsenal expected with a 50% probability of a clean sheet so if you do have the likes of Saka uh, sorry Saliba or Gabriel definitely worth considering those Forest probably their last decent fixture of this run so if you did go for one of their defenders Aina Bolly Murillo definitely worth playing them this week with a 37% chance of a clean sheet and then City as well if you went for Rico Lewis I thought he looked absolutely brilliant and we'll be definitely talking about him a little bit later on in the video Villa as well with their strong start their strong run starting up as well definitely another team i would be looking to consider and the clean sheet odds as well for them are not too bad however the projected goals a little bit low but i would like to see rob t fpl's betting data on that one moving on let's move on to some data from 11 if if you want to go and check out their amazing website again link in the description obviously they do you know projected analysis for clean sheets goals and of course player goal involvement this is clean sheets for the next few match days as you can see Manchester City definitely some strong ones in there minus probably the Arsenal game in match day five and a difficult game in match day six as well some very very good fixtures in there so it does bode well for the likes of Gavardio and obviously if you've taken a gamble or looking to take a gamble on Rico Lewis Arsenal up there as well very strong high probability again from 11 to 5 for match day three against Brighton match day four and match day five are difficult but it's still not the worst percentages I've seen then that strong fixture run does start to kick in around match day six and as we can see very very high probability and I imagine some of us might even be potentially looking at potentially going for a double up of Arsenal defenders over that period as well Liverpool some quite high percentages in there as well after the United game so again the Trents the Robertsons the Van Dykes worth some consideration Chelsea I think if you're looking for a 4.5 million defender Colwell could be a decent shout with some good clean sheet odds coming up for them as well same goes for Aston Villa obviously they've got a plethora of 4.5 million options strong run of fixtures with decent clean sheet percentages as well obviously some teams down the bottom that I would be looking to avoid it does look like if you've got Pedro Porro maybe those defensive returns are going to start to dry up a little bit you are more so hoping for an attacking return rather than a defensive clean sheet as well so a little bit worrying from uh, obviously their perspective as well again Manchester United I said it last week I'm gonna say it again I would not be looking at any of their defensive assets it seems like they've still got the defensive issues that they had last season so again a very very easy avoid in my opinion uh right let's move on to projected goals again this is all coming from 11 of I as we can see Manchester City and Liverpool probably the key standouts for the next I would say three weeks as well Liverpool in match day five looking very very good especially in match day four as well that's probably where a lot of people are going to be looking at 
bringing in Mohamed Salah for Erling Haaland around that run when City's fixtures do start to tail away. And obviously, they have to go and play Arsenal as well during that period. You can see very similar kind of data trends as well with Arsenal for projected goals. High for match day three. Four is a little bit difficult. Five is abysmal against City, but then it does pick up after six and seven. So if you are on a wild card or thinking about a wild card in six and seven, I definitely would be looking at loading up on a few Arsenal assets. Again, Chelsea feature in this section. It is that strong green run in the FDR rating. It's also coming through in the 11 fi data as well. So if Cole Palmer, Jackson and Cuckoo look like decent options tomorrow, definitely worth considering in my opinion as longer term options. Same goes with Aston Villa as well. Some great longer term fixtures coming up for them. In terms of teams you want to probably be looking to avoid, the likes of Nottingham Forest, if you've got the likes of Chris Wood, Morgan Gibbs White, it is probably time to step away from those assets as well. Uh, West Ham starts to pick up around match day seven, as you can see there. I mentioned it on my Twitter. Obviously, Jared Bowen is a player I always end up in my team. Again, I will be looking around match day seven when their good fixture run does start to pick up and potentially go and target him as well. So definitely worth some consideration. That was all the team data on teams I would be looking to target over the next few weeks. Now let's go and look at some individual player data. Starting off with two lads who massively, massively impressed me in the Manchester City game against Ipswich. Now I know Erling Haaland got the hat trick, but there's no real point in talking about him. It's these other players that we want to be looking to bring into our sides. And I feel if you went with, you know, the Son, the Saka, Salah combination in midfield like me, or maybe another midfielder, you're probably wanting to move away from Son this week with two difficult fixtures, Newcastle, then Arsenal. And I think KDB could be the ideal replacement. He's definitely a player I'm going to eye up. West Ham away, City always seem to do quite well at the London Stadium. Brentford at home as well. Arsenal at home in match day uh, five is not the greatest and then there's also a tricky fixture in six as well if I'm not mistaken yeah Newcastle away not the easiest but then after that it is Fulham Wolves and Southampton but I definitely think KDB was magnificent today could have easily got himself another assist as well to go with the one he got today put in a, a peach of a ball for Erling Haaland if it wasn't for a wonder save from Muric it would have been another Haaland goal and it would have been another KDB assist I think if you are looking to cover off Haaland as well for the next few games KDB could be a fantastic option as well so I think he personally just shat myself a little bit could have been a great option there uh, to go for but yeah, for me, I think he's a great option, to be honest, uh, is KDB to potentially go and pick up. Super low ownership as well. And if we look back to last season, only managed to play 18 games, but managed to come away with 14 goal involvements. So still showing he is available at that top class level. Another player who really, really impressed with me was Rico Lewis. Now, I am expecting limited minutes for this guy, but could be worth a little bit of a punt because the positions this guy was getting into were phenomenal. He was basically playing in very similar kind of role, if you remember a couple of years back, where Stones was playing, where he was kind of just drifting around midfield and would just appear on the edge of the box. I think there was one chance where he put Harlem through as well. So if he continues to play in that role at 4.5 million for a team with good projected clean sheets as well, he could be a fantastic player to go and pick up over the next few weeks weeks especially if he continues to see minutes continues to play in that same role as well so could be worth potentially going and picking up for your sides as a cheap way or an alternative way to go and obviously get Gavardio I feel he was a little bit more progressive today whether or not that was just because of Ipswich but again it seemed like he was more playing within that back three rather than pushing forward so it might be worth a little bit of consideration against going for you know Gavardio and maybe looking at alternative options like Rico Lewis especially if he can manage to keep his place in this side over the next few I would say then he is starting to work his way into Pep Guardiola's plans but we always know with Pep he is a little bit of a rotation merchant right let's move on to the next set of players it is going to be Danny Welbeck and it is going to be João Pedro these two obviously picked up the goals against Manchester United in uh, the game at lunchtime kickoff Danny Welbeck as well, two goals, one assist, one goal for João Pedro as well, an absolutely fantastic header. I think it was fully deserved. He was the better player today. But these two seem to be starting every single week and there doesn't seem to be, you know, any kind of hesitation from the manager to put these two in again. Now, I think for game week three, probably not worth bringing into your sides. Arsenal away is going to be an extremely difficult fixture for Brighton, regardless of them being unbeaten so far. I still think, you know, assets could be, you know, maybe a little bit limited. And I think if you are, though, looking for 
for a longer term Dominic Solanke replacement, maybe to free up a little bit of money as well. These two could be fantastic enablers. They've got Ipswich and Nottingham Forest in four and five. Great fixtures. Obviously, after that, though, game week six is Chelsea, Tottenham, Newcastle. So again, they go hot, they go cold. But if you are looking for maybe some purple patch players with, you know, a game against Ipswich at home and a game against Nottingham Forest before maybe moving around to a different 5.5 million forward, these two could be fantastic enablers to go for as well. I think the main appeal for me would probably be more towards Jao Pedro just for that penalty appeal over Danny Welbeck. But he has started the season on fire, getting in the right positions as well. I think Matoma and Minta as well in the midfield departments are also fantastic options you could be considering this week. But I've gone for Welbeck and Jao Pedro as my two highlights in that forward area because I know a lot of people will still have had Dominic Solanke in their sides for this week or will be looking for replacements. So let me know what you think of these two and of course KDB and Lewis. Next up, I wanted to discuss the two cheap enabling midfield options that have started the season on fire. It is Emil Smith-Rowe and it is Suchek. Now, we're going to start off with Suchek first. The City, well, not the City fixtures, the West Ham fixtures, so they say, are definitely quite difficult over the next few. Obviously, Manchester City at home, not a great fixture. Fulham away, they show they've got a decent, you know, pedigree at home this season. Then it's Chelsea. After that, though, it does start to pick up with Brentford, Ipswich, you know, Tottenham, Manchester United. It does start to come back as decent options. But at that 5 million range, I don't think you mind sitting him on the bench for those, you know, potentially more difficult games. But he seems like a, a, a constant threat. It seems like he's back to Moyes' first season, to be honest, with Suchek being obviously mentioned in one of these. He just seems to be popping up in the right area. As you can see, six shots in the box, all six of those as well, you know, Inside the box is absolutely ridiculous. Good expected goals. Decent big chances created. Big chances, obviously, as well. I think he's had one big chance missed as well. Scored today. Got an assist as well. Absolutely phenomenal stuff from him. And I think he is a fantastic, wonderful enabler at that 5 million. It seems like he's locked himself in that side and is getting opportunities that I don't think a lot of us would have expected. There always are some players that we never really can predict as, you know, content creators and FPL kind of managers that are going to do well. And I think Suchek could be one of those cheap enablers that's getting into the right position, creating plenty of good opportunities. And I think if it continues during this, you know, City, Fulham, Chelsea run, the likes of Brentford Ipswich could be really worth considering as a 5 million option to be honest so I think Suchek as one of those cheap enabling midfielders could be a fantastic option to go for for your side the other man is going to be Emil Smith-Rowe the next two Fulham fixtures are pretty decent with Ipswich, West Ham. You'd argue as well they are home to Newcastle, so why would they not do well in that fixture? And then, of course, they do have Nottingham Forest after that as well. Got his goal today as well and looked very, very bright. Picked up 10 points in that game. Finally managing to seem to, I think, find his feet. And I'm, I'm really happy for him. After some difficult years with injuries, I think this guy could be the man that, you know, we all kind of expected. And coming in at that 5.5 million price tag, if he keeps himself fit, could be a fantastic enabler for the rest of the season. So maybe, you know, in the next few weeks, if you are looking for a way to find to get Haaland or to get Salah, either of these guys could be fantastic enablers to go and pick up in your sides. Now, of course, one team we had to talk about and obviously discuss their players is going to be Aston Villa. They've arguably got one of the best fixture runs coming up this season. Leicester, Everton, Wolves, Ipswich, United, Fulham and Bournemouth all the way up to the game week nine. An absolutely incredible run. Obviously, they were one of the standout teams from last season. They did put in, I would say, an inspired performance against Arsenal. And for large parts of that game, looked like they could have come away with a win. They're probably going to be a little bit disappointed. And I definitely think there were some standout performers one of those has to be Morgan Rogers at 5 million he seems like a little bit of a cheat code arguably I would say with this fixture run the best enabler we are going to find in the game obviously we spoke about Suchek we spoke about Emil Smith-Rowe also being options but for me I think if you are looking to obviously you know try and cram these premiums in the likes of Saka, Salah, Haaland, KDB, Rogers is going to be that enabler to do that obviously we're using last season's per 90 data as you can see as well his predicted points are 12.2 i would say that is probably going to increase from fantasy football hub off the back of that performance for large parts of the game he ran the midfield he was one of the key dominants and i think for this amazing fixture five million seems like an absolute cheat code so i would be obviously looking to have morgan rogers in one of my sides and well that's that's the plan really we're going to go and get more 
Morgan Rogers. And I think for me, going to be KDB this week. Obviously, we'll see how things pan out. But for me, those are the two standout players I've seen this week and two players I really want to get my hands on for game week three and beyond. Some of the other players, I think second, my second favourite player, if I was looking for a 4.5 million defender, maybe if we get some injury news this week, Esri Konza at 4.5, he can play right back, he can play centre back. And he's just pretty much one of Emery's first names on the team sheet. Again, with this long fixture run, you could very easily play him in every single fixture. And I would be confident that he would be able to pick up some nice, decent points along that run as well. Uh, then I'd probably say the next two are probably more, I would say, on the fringe at the moment in terms of picks for me. Now, Ollie Watkins was absolutely fantastic, as we can see last season. His goal involvement per 90 was through the roof. This season, though kind of both games he's came off in the 60th minute hasn't really looked anything like the player he was last season he had a glorious opportunity today obviously was denied by a fantastic save by David Rea but for me I think with him coming off in the 60th minute I think they've promised Duran potentially more minutes off the bench as well it feels like when you're paying a more premium price for Ollie Watkins at that 9 million price tag he's just not going to be able to justify it in my personal opinion so for now and probably up until after the international break unless we see more minutes for Ollie Watkins against Leicester against Everton I'm not going to go near him for now I think if we're paying 9 million for a player that's coming off around the 60 70th minute not worth it in my opinion so definitely a player I'm going to avoid for the next few but keep my eye on obviously with this great run going all the way up until nine same goes for Leon Bailey he played large proportions of today his per 90 data from last season as well is pretty phenomenal in terms of all midfielders I do think he is a bargain at that 6.5 million price tag but when we get a player like Rogers, who's also playing very similar minutes and looks better for 5 million. You might as well take that 1.5 million saving to the bank. Use it to obviously, you know, fund some better players around your side as well. So for me, I probably would say Rogers and Konza are my two standout picks. Bailey and Watkins more on the fringe. And I'd probably throw Onana into that mix as well. But he seems a little bit of a troublemaker with a potentially a few yellow cards and maybe some red cards this season. But those were the Villa, Villa assets. Let's go and take a look at some pretty predicted points. And finally, you know, I absolutely love to end the video always looking at the Fantasy Football Hub's predicted points for that game week. It did come out with Haaland on top last week. It's got him there yet again with 7.2. So I do feel if you do have the big man, it is worth giving him the armband over every other player. However, the likes of Saka and Salah in a very, very close second and Cole Palmer creeping his way up with some good fixtures starting to appear. So I think if he does look good tomorrow, I definitely think he'll be on a lot more people's radars. So I'm just putting that one out there nice and early as well. As we can see, Foden and KDB. I mean, Foden didn't feature in this game, so I would expect his predicted points to drop off a little bit. KDBs, though, I would expect to obviously go up. So decent minutes today as well. I'm expecting decent minutes, especially for the next two as well. There's a plethora of Arsenal players in there. Havertz, Odegaard, White, Gabriel. Again, all very solid pickups to go and grab this week if you are looking for an Arsenal way in. Obviously, though, they do have Tottenham and Manchester City in four and five, so be wary of that. However, Leicester, Southampton and Bournemouth in six seven and eight definitely could redeem themselves there as well and Buemo starting to make his way onto the list as well if he did go for him in game week one fair play obviously they play Southampton I still wouldn't be recommending him I think match day six is the week where I would go and pick up Brian and Buemo replaces really nicely if you went with Anthony Gordon there they do have City and Tottenham in four and five so you know you are just getting a Southampton fixture for this week but maybe if you play an FPL draft or one of those other game modes where you're just looking for a one week punt could be a decent option and then of course Ollie Watkins as well making it onto that list with you know Aston Villa's strong fixture run starting to come good so again could be a decent option that we've already spoke about in quite a bit of depth as well thank you very much for watching today ladies and gentlemen like I said if you did enjoy today's video be sure to like comment and subscribe and good luck in game week three